Now, if you're thinking about heading out this weekend, we have the perfect report for you. For this week's Food on Friday, our food critic Richard Vines has taken on the arduous task of hunting out London's best martini. We've come here to Tobias's place, Pinchito, because he does a, his martini in a very particular way. He does something called a throwing technique, which you're about to see him start to do, which is a technique that was developed in Cuba and then transferred over to Spain. He throws the liquid and then catches it in the other glass. And what this does is it gives a dilution that's in between shaking a martini and stirring a martini. And it gives a nice aeration to your drink, so you get a different texture and a different mouthfeel to your drink. Cheers. Cheers. OK, so a thrown martini. And what you get is you get a little bit of aeration going through there. It gives it a nice light, almost pétillance to it, to the martini, which I think is a really nice way. It's, a, it's an afternoon, several martinis for the martini. It's not a one martini only martini. You can have a few of them. And it's, it's slightly wetter as well, which I think is a nice thing. I think there's been... There was what, a, is, what is wetter? There is more dilution and there is more vermouth, or in this case, sherry in it, than there is spirit. The glasses must be chilled, obviously. The glasses have to be, you know, looking at, I mean, the colder the better again, sort of minus. Uh, the coupe. Well, I mean, when you're looking at finding a good glass for a martini, you don't want it to be too wide. You don't, I mean, obviously, the wider it is, the, the, the warmer the drink's going to get. More surface area means that the drink's going to warm up quite quickly. And in a perfect world, I quite like serving martinis in a, in a chilled champagne uh, flute, actually. But people would look at you funny. That's just for me after I finish work. It's a vodka martini, which is nice. I think it's got lovely flavour, actually. I think what's unusual is you wouldn't expect the cucumber to add so much flavour. Do you ever use cucumber yourself? I use it not in martinis. I normally use it in punches, basically, just because it's very pungent. And as you can see, it's reacted very, very quickly in that glass to become quite a powerful cucumber note to that drink. I'm going to make you a uh, version of a dry martini. Within this, I've put uh, an essence of... Uh, grape seeds, which are very high in uh, tannins and polyphenols, uh, which will give you that kind of dryness uh, on your tongue. How many marks out of ten? 9.5. Really? <laughs> yes, I've leapt. <laughs> <laughs> so close to the perfect, Martin. Close to the perfect, isn't it? Well, I think, I think what's interesting is somebody has actually tried to make the perfect, Martin. And the search for the perfect cocktail goes on next week, although I think the last one will be a tough act to beat, a completely sober and not all hungover, we promise. <laughs> Richard Vines joins me now. So, Richard, Nick Strangeway with you there. He's pretty serious about his cocktails. He's a fabulous guy. He won the World Bartender of the Year in 2008 in New Orleans, and Time Out's called him London's greatest bartender. And he really knows his drinks very well. He's got a consultancy and travels the world uh, setting up drinks lists for the Six Cents uh, Posh Spa Company. And he also helps set up some of the best cocktail lists in London, so places like Hawksmoor and uh, Hicks, my current favourite bar, mm. and Lounge Lover, of course. But, but he's a good guy. You know, he's not too serious. He enjoys it. So it wasn't just tasting and certainly wasn't spitting out. He was, uh, you know, even we had a couple of martinis in some places just to be sure they were as good as they seemed. I'm sure you did. And um, I was quite intrigued by the throwing technique. <laughs> I'd, I'd never seen it before. The guy doing it's from Ibiza, he's a very straightforward guy. Okay. You know, some of the other, you know, mixologists we had would talk a lot about the theory. This guy just did it and it was very good. As uh, Nick said there, that it was very light, that drink, because it got so much air into it. Again, I think I might have to go back there. You might have to go back there. And, uh, the, and just, we're just seeing pictures there of the cucumber in the martini, and that added flavour. Surprisingly, that's unusual, right? Yeah, Nick was a bit upset by that martini because it was a <laughs> vodka martini, and okay. he thinks a martini should be gin unless otherwise stated. But he, uh, he, the cucumber, it's a very refreshing drink. I think it's good for the summer, nice for a summer afternoon. We were out on the Friday there, which is, I think, the best time to spend uh, drinking cocktails. And very briefly, you said that Nick was setting up places in London. What are the challenges? You know, we've, we know that New Yorkers are very proud of their martinis. Is appetite for the drink growing in London as well? I think it is. I think we're getting more sophisticated and people now have opinions on martinis. Like, people think which gin they should be using and so on. So I think uh, he's got a discerning audience here now. Richard Vines, good luck on your quest. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Continues next week. Thanks very much.